Hi, it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and I have another binding that I'm going to show you today. With this one, it's kind of like a matchbook binding in a way, but a little bit different. I'm calling this one In a Pinch, and I'm going to show you from, let's see if I can catch it in the light just right there we go. Basically, it attaches kind of like a matchbook, but then it spreads out, and each of the individual pages are separate but it all attaches from a central point right there um, this is an album for a project that I have coming up but I just want to kind of show you how this is all going to work so it attaches from a central point the outermost pages have a long uh, kind of a channel and it and as it goes towards the center the channel is shorter so at the very center it's just a quarter of an inch so that there's half inch between pages this next one has three quarters of an inch the quarter inch plus the half inch and this last one is an inch and a quarter and it goes the same way as we continue on down through the pages they go then get wider as we go to the back so it's an even number and with these there's three different sections. Um, this is just kind of a my prototype folding type thing. Um, these are actually just have a half inch fin for you to attach a page to. But you can see then how those all come together and then this is attached to the cover. So let me show you how this all um, gets put together. And again, there's three units that you're going to create to put this binding together. There's a center unit that has two pages attached to it and the two outer ones that also have two pages for a total of six pages. I don't know that I would go any um, wider than six pages, but that's me. I tend to like a five to six page album. I'm not one who's ever been big on the you know, eight pages, nine pages, 10 pages. Um, mainly because I don't like to get much wider than say a three inch three to three and a half is the top width of a spine I think they start getting a little too cumbersome and visually they're just a little bit too thick um, in my opinion when they get that wide so this one um, has the six pages so the center you're going to be scoring it down the center and then a half an inch on each side of the center and here's our channel, which is a quarter of an inch, and our fin to attach our pages, which is half an inch. For each of these sides, which is a mirror image of each other, we have our half an inch on each outside edge to attach our pages. We have three quarters of an inch on one side and an inch and a quarter on the other. And that's a progression of half an inch steps. So if I have a quarter inch channel here, I have a three quarter inch channel here, and an inch and a quarter inch channel here, where I'm adding half an inch to a quarter of an inch is a three quarter, half an inch to the three quarter is the inch and a quarter. And that's giving me my half inch gaps between my pages, because my pages have flaps and other interactive parts to them and so I want there to be plenty of space between the pages. If I wanted it to be a quarter of an inch between the pages, if I had a quarter of an inch here, this would be um, just half an inch and then this one would be three quarters of an inch if you get how that patterning goes. Whatever your gap is, you add it to whatever your channel is at the center. So with the center one, we're going to fold it in half and then we're going to accordion fold these two sections. So that gives me my attachment section, my channels, and my fins that I attach my pages to. So I'm going to that kind of um, spine piece, I'm going to um, attach that together with either tape or glue. And I have this as typically a half an inch. You can do it a little bit longer if you want to, but I think half an inch is a good, um, good width. So I'm going to go ahead and 
attach that together. This is going to split. This allows my half inch gap between the, the center two pages. So I get, get it folded nice and square so that creates the channel and my attachments for my pages. On this one, we're going to also fold where those half inch comes together and that's going to be the same as this piece on this one. And then we just have the channels are half an inch wider on one side than they are on the other. But it's configured essentially the same way. We've got the attachment for our, our pages, the attachment to our cover, and then our channels or spacing. And actually with this one, then that was to show you the spacing. This is all going to go to one side. So that gives me my half inch spacing. When we attach it to this one, it also gives me that half inch spacing. So that gives me four of my six pages all spaced half an inch apart when I attach them together. We'll do the same thing with this one. We're going to add our taper glue to that half inch section on both of these. And then I want to really quick, before I attach them all together, run through the spacing on these. Again, with this guy, it's a two and a half inch strip, and you're going to cut it to the height of whatever you want your page to be. And then you're going to score half an inch on each side. You'll score it down the center, half an inch each side of the center, and then a quarter of an inch on each side. So it'll go at half inch, three quarters, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Wait, no, it'll go half inch, three quarters, inch and a quarter, inch and three quarters, and two inches out of a two and a half inch strip. For these, it'll be a four inch strip by whatever height you want for your page and you're going to score it half an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and three quarters, two and a quarter, and three and a half. So you'll have a half inch section, a three quarter, a half, a half, a one and a quarter, and a half. So it's going to give you your four inches. We're then this these two side by side half inch sections are going to attach together. And then we'll fold the tab so that it's perpendicular to those channels. Those channels, however, are independent of each other. We're not attaching them down. And we'll do that with both of these. Fold the center to one side so that the channels are like this. And then we're going to assemble these. We'll have our center piece, and these will go on each side. And that will form our six fins to attach our pages. But each of these units or sections is separate from each other. So we'll attach these guys all together. You can use glue or tape, whichever is your preference. And then I'm going to show you how to make, I'm shedding on here, <laughs> how to make your um, cover that works with this as well. Let's attach this. I want this so that this fold is close, but not covering over the fold line. So when they're attached together, they look like that. Same thing on this side. We'll do the same thing.
fold these so these are up smooth as on the back the tab attachments for the pages are on top and I'll fold the um, cover attachment strip back out of the way and that's the fold that I'm going to lay right next to the fold line without covering it over that way all of my tab pieces for my pages are on one side all right so this is the part that's going to attach to our covers so with our covers we have our two covers which are slightly wider I just have them an eighth of an inch wider they can be whatever distance you want wider than your pages so I have my two covers I have a split spine with this because the spine is going to go on each side of that center section and then I have two skinny sections which also will go on each side so those will go on each side of that spine fin these will attach to the spine fins on each side and then these edges here will attach to my covers we'll then have a piece that will cover over all that so let me show you here how this works from the side view of this so my spine comes in on each side it has a chipboard piece and then it has my split spine that attaches to my covers and then there's another piece that attaches on top to create um, a solid unit for the spine so we're going to attach our half spine to our spine fin I guess we can call it so we'll attach those now I'm attaching these with what I've been using for the past several months which is a fabric tape otherwise known as hockey stick tape but you could also use a strip of fabric a strip of ribbon glued or use adhesive to attach down um, you could even use um, paper if you wanted to do so I just know that a lot of people have been having a lot of problems with the paper cracking even even if you put it with the grain against the grain it's it's just um, a lot of pressure on paper to expect it to bend and fold and be flexible when it's not intended to be that in something like a cover so I've been using fabric for years and recently with my son playing hockey I had an epiphany going out to the garage <laughs> to get something and we have rolls and rolls of hockey stick tape stick around our house actually I'm gonna set this down this way it comes in a variety of colors I've done some videos about it so you can watch some of my my other videos about using hockey stick tape where to get it what widths it comes in what colors it comes in and all that so if you just look on my channel under hockey stick tape you'll find more information so I'm gonna allow about a sixteenth or so inch gap like so and then I'll cut this probably should have left it a little bit longer at that end but I'll, I'll wrap the other end when I place it on here now one of the things with this this um, kind of natural color tape versus like a black is that it um, can be inked to whatever color you want it's super strong stuff it withstands 100 mile an hour pucks so I figured it can withstand being in a scrapbook um, and it makes it nice and flexible so I've attached that give it a good burnish either side run this down that joint now I'm ready to do the second one same way it's really sticky stuff <laughs> 
So I'm going to lay that like I meant to on the first one, about a half an inch in from the edge of the tape. Lay that on there. Give it about a sixteenth of an inch gap. And then trim this off and wrap it around. And we're going to do this not only on these joints, but on the joints to attach this to my cover. I almost finished this wool off. I hope I have enough of this light color to finish this. <laughs> I might have to finish it off in a block. And then it just cuts with regular scissors. This is a strong cloth tape. Now, um, it may look somewhat like some other um, cloth tapes that you may have around your house, like a medical cloth tape. That stuff doesn't have quite the adhesive that this does. Um, so you'll want to be careful of using some other sort, sorts of um, fabric adhesive. Okay, so what we're going to do now is attach our spine half spine onto our covers. So you'll have your half inch tab, your half of your top spine, and your spine. And your, your um, this is a half inch wide, and I have this at one and five eighths, because my cover, using the dimensions of this, is three and a quarter. And I think that's just a really good standard size for do, doing this, rather than trying to figure out math for all sorts of different widths with this binding I'm just recommending you have half an inch gaps between your pages and if so you need a three and a quarter inch um, spine width you can do a three inch spine and just have a little less space in the front and the back but a three to three and it three to three and a quarter inch spine excuse me which means these will be an inch and a half to inch and five eighths for each half of it to give you that width. All right. I think I'm going to run out. I'm just going to do black on this other section because this looks like it's going to run out and I don't want to have to go grab another roll. So it also comes in black. I just was doing it in the cream so it's, it showed a little bit easier. These rolls have been around for a while so <laughs> that's why I'm having it. A more challenging time getting them unrolled off the roll because I'm trying to use up the stuff that we had around the house. Okay, so I'm going to put this so it's about, well, let's put it on this side. Um, it sets about in the middle ish. Then I can take my cover and again about a 16th inch gap. Cut it so it's a half inch, three quarters of an inch longer, and wrap that to the inside. And I can put this on this. And again, you can use like three quarter inch ribbon, one inch wide ribbon, if you prefer fabric strips that you either glue or use adhesive to attach. Trim that off. But you just want to make sure you get good coverage over the joint. The joint's roughly centered. So that's going to give me a cover that will then form kind of a J. I'll do that real quick on the second one. so that it the edge is approximately in the middle sixteenth ish inch gap half inch overhang on each side And then we're 
almost got our covers built. All right, so the joints are all now covered up. Gives a nice clean look. So now I can go ahead and cover um, my covers with pattern paper and we can cover the inside of the top spine half. And I've got these papers all cut and ready to go. So this is my exterior, this is my back. So I'm going to attach this. I have this little stripe at the bottom just because of the length of my papers. My paper is going to stop right at the edge of the the um, joint there. Now on the outside, this piece doesn't need to be covered. I'm not going to go ahead and put the papers on the main part. On the inside, I would put my inside papers. Again, goes right up to the joint. I have on the inside, because this part will show, I can go ahead and put um, paper on the inside of my spine. Lining up with the edge, not covering over the joints. So that'll go on there. And then I have a strip that goes on the inside of this spine piece. Again, not covering the joint. So that's going to be on the inside, and I'll have this pattern paper here on the inside. So let's do the same thing on this one. The outside paper, or for the main part of the cover, can be done after you've got this all assembled, but it's much easier to put these pieces on now before we put it all together. And I'm just using adhesive. You can use glue if that is your preferred method. Touch that on. I like to come up with different bindings. It gives you different opportunities depending on what style of album you want. Obviously, you can choose any kind of binding. But I like to give you ideas, ways, different ways that you can bind your projects. All right, so these are again going to form an L. My pattern paper's on the inside. Or I guess it's more of a J. So these are going to go one on each side to form the J. And then this is going to attach in between those sections right there and then when this opens all up and you attach your pages they spread out to allow your pages to attach so to attach these you can use some glue strong adhesive maybe even a combination of the two I personally like the combination all right, so I'm going to attach this so that the, this edge is towards my binding and it'll wrap this way when it's attached. So I'm going to peel this off. I'm going to throw a little few dots of glue along so the adhesive will hold it, but the glue just gives me some insurance on there and it's less likely to fail all right so I'm going to place so this edge is up against the fold but not crossing over it and I'm centered and so if I have about an eighth of an inch on each end attaching that on do the same thing on this other side
So the outsides of my covers will be back to back. Oops, at this point. Some little dots of glue. Again, just gives a bit of an insurance policy that it's going to hold in place. Let's smooth that one out a little bit. And center and line it right outside the fold. So there's my binding. It should all still be able to go out flat. This opens up and goes around it. So there is some space between the top of my binding and my cover. Now, I don't want my cover to be, you know, my spine to be wobbly. So then what you'll be doing is attaching this piece on the outside. And I use a combination of both glue and adhesive to attach that and stabilizes my spine. So then once you've got that attached, any kind of sleeve type of page can then attach onto these pages. For the album that I'm putting into here, the pages that I'm putting into this album, um, it's the album that goes into In Suspense 2. The pattern will be available shortly um, on my website for that. And with that, as you can see, my spine is, is now um, rigid with this added piece on there. I'm having this being a spine that's at the top. It could be um, for side mounted, but you can see how my pages will then flatten down and lay nice and flat as you flip through the different pages that are in this album and again comes back and it lays flat as you are able to then go through all the different pages that are in the album and we will be decorating this album um, on my live shows in the next few weeks after we finish the in suspense project itself so anyway that's the in the pinch binding and it's going to be it's just a fun different kind of matchbook style of binding that allows you to have spaces between the pages because we're all doing so many interactive things and that and that sort so anyway in the pinch binding thanks a bunch